Yo, 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 favorite YouTuber of all time. We got to talk about Francis Tyson Perry. Look, I've been harping on this a long time because, bro, it was quite amazing to watch. You know what? I was able to piece together technically why Francis was able to beat Tyson, like, so easily. I figured it out. And it comes down to, like, the, the difference of the sport between MMA and boxing. See, one of the things you kind of learn from, like, fighting MMA is that MMA is about finishing. It's very hard to, like, win an MMA match if you're just looking to win off decisions. And that's really not what the essence of the sport is about. That's why they have a longer round duration and there's more taxing, like, endurance on the body because the goal is to have finishes. Well, the goal is to win, but the best way to easily win is by a finish or through submission, through knockout, TKO, whatever the hell. And so what you learn about MMA is those guys have more of a, um, a killer's mindset. And when you have to also consider like all the variables that are accounted within an MMA fight. So you have to deal with elbows. You got to deal with punches. You got to deal with uh, grappling, clinches, takedowns, kicks, high kicks, low kicks. There's, there's almost an infinite amount of shots that you can take. So when the MMA mind is fighting within a fight, it's much more of a savage mindset because you have to be prepared for everything. And so when I was watching the Tyson and... Um, Fear, not the, the Tyson and Francis fight. One of the problems that come with boxing is because, because uh, as a boxer, you're raised up with other boxers. You don't ever spend time fighting other arts. You purely just do boxing. So what happens is you can get away with a lot of dancing because in the round system, like if you think about the amateurs, it's not about finishing the guy in the amateur. It's just about touching. Touch, touch. Whoever touches the, the guy the most amount of times wins the fight. When you get to the pros, once again, boxing did themselves to, they did this to themselves by having like this grooming stage where you're fighting random smoes and tomato cans throughout most of your fight. And realistically, you only might see four or five fights like of, of a real contest in your whole career. And those are supposed to be big money fights. And usually, you don't take those fights. If you're the A side, you don't take those fights until you absolutely need to. But one of the things you learn within boxing is there's a lot of flower shit of like dancing, doing all this fucking head moving and stuff like that and doing that because... They have a false perception of what an actual fight is. Boxing is not fighting. There's very few guys that fought. Like Pacquiao's an actual fighter. That was a legitimate fighter. And he didn't mind taking losses and he would come in to come get you. Most boxers are not actually coming to get you. They're looking to score points and look good to the judges so they can be able to get a decision. So it's more of a dance as opposed to an actual like fight. Because when you're fighting, there's a certain amount of grit and there's a certain amount of like killer instinct you got to have. And you can watch in boxing. Most of the time when they got a guy hurt, they're not finishing. They kind of sit back, let him get up, and then they might start pouring on the pressure. But it's more like just war of attrition trying to chip the guy down. In MMA, if you see a weakness in a guy, you exploit it religiously over, over, and over again. If the guy can't stop your takedown, you keep taking him down, you keep beating him. And because in MMA, you know there's nobody to stop the fight. If you get knocked down or you get hit or you drop, you have a much better defense your mindset's a lot more still and reserved because you're always prepared for the idea that if I get dropped, I, I have to scramble out. I got to do something. So when you're watching an MMA fighter, as far as striking is concerned, they're not fully loading all their shots. They're playing more of like a 60, 70 percent like thing. And then as soon as they see the opening lips, then they pour on the pressure. And I, I think a good guy to watch that with is Max Holloway. Max Holloway is a beautiful striker. Because he's just touch, 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 touch. And as soon as he starts to feel that you start to welt, and as soon as he starts to feel that, oh, okay, he's starting to fade back, then he pours on more pressure and he's going to knock you out. He's going to finish you. As opposed to boxing, that's not necessarily the case. Guys are not finishing guys in boxing in the same way. And so what we started to realize with the Tyson and uh, Francis fight is when you take away all the other elements from MMA, when you just make it a purely striking game. And this is why the strikers in MMA are the highest level of strikers. I don't believe kickboxers. I don't believe Muay Thai. I don't think any of those guys can match up with an MMA guy when it comes to striking. Because they fight with a certain amount of comfort in knowing, okay, if I get dropped, I get back up. I got these big gloves and I can get down. The rounds are like longer. I mean, the rounds are shorter, so I can sit back, cruise. I got more rounds to sit back and hide. I don't have to be fighting the whole time. In MMA, you're fighting the whole time. It's very difficult to not be fighting MMA because if you're not going to pour on the pressure. Say you just put your hands up and you shell. 
What's the guy do? He'll go for shoot, take down, take you down, kick you in the legs. So in MMA, your perception, your awareness is so much more higher as compared to what a boxer is going through, which is just purely hitting the hands, dancing around, moving around the ring. Like that Canelo shit, when you're watching, when he goes like dancing, all that shit, he would get smoked in MMA. Motherfucker's coming after you. That's what Tyson realized. He was like, holy fuck, this guy's not stopping. Like usually we, we will dance, hit, hit a little bit, and then we'll fade back and I'll do a little dance, put my hands down, move. Tyson, Fury wasn't having, not Fury, but Francis wasn't having none of that. As soon as Francis felt pressure, shifted back, got into the middle of the ring. All right, back at it again. Tyson's like, what? He's back here again? And Francis poured it on. Dude, dude, Tyson tried to get out and get around. Francis just, okay, stalk you. All right, I'm coming right back at you. And that kept happening repeatedly over and over. And Tyson's like, what the fuck am I experiencing? And once, even when, even when Tyson did an elbow, now it might've been inadvertent. But I think it was more of like a prey response. Like he's like, get this guy off me. He just threw, like, he didn't put his weight behind it and he caught him on the elbow. And see, here's what the what I'm starting to realize about the MMA and like in uh, the boxing, the difference in the striking. In MMA, you can't like be fully committed to your shots unless you know the guy is hurt. Because if you just like throw him with everything you got. He's going to dodge, slip. It's going to take you off balance. He's going to take you down. He's going to clinch you. You're going to put yourself in a bad position. So most guys in MMA, they have a, they're very light on their feet. And they're preparing for like checking kicks. They're preparing for elbows. They're preparing. They're looking for other things outside just striking. So when you remove those other variables and it's just pure striking, like pure fisticus, pure pugilism, the MMA, the MMA guy can smoke you. Because he's like, oh, wait, hold up. I can actually throw full power and not worry about a leg kick. I don't have to worry about a takedown. And so now that gives him new confidence because then you're all he's also getting hit with fucking big ass gloves. So the fear of getting hit and cut, because in MMA, that's a real thing. Getting cut, getting slashed up and by elbow, your defense, you have to kind of sit back and put your hands and paw to keep the guy off you. Your framing is a lot different. And like what I was watching was Francis was like, oh, this is easy. Fucking, this is too easy. And Tyson was having his worldview like, what the fuck? I thought I was the best man to ever walk. I thought I was the best man to ever walk the planet. What what just happened to me? And also another thing on a side note, which is kind of funny to me. Francis just recently got ranked in uh, some boxing ranking. They ranked him the 500th boxer, heavyweight boxer. And that's laughable. Like, because it's also laughable because the WBC said they want to put him in the top 10. But to rank Francis 500th. After taking the world champ to decision and winning rounds and dropping them, it's like what 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 are we talking about with these rankings? But boxing almost has like a fantasy ranking. Like I don't even know what a boxing ranking is anymore, and this is really detrimental to the sport of boxing. Like we're gonna get one more. I'm telling you, when Jay Paul fights Canelo, we're going to see. Holy shit, it was never real. Because here's the thing, Jay Paul trains MMA too. He trains MMA. And that is just a different mindset to be an MMA fighter because there's so many more things you have to account for. And so when you're releasing all the other shit, they can just focus purely on beating your ass and getting you because the MMA guy is not going to get as tired as the uh, the striker or as the boxer. Because once again, there's a thing called mental fatigue. See, one of the hard parts about MMA is not so much about the fighting, but it's the mental fatigue of Oh, this guy can take me down. Like when you're you're, when you're fighting a guy like Khabib, it's very difficult to be at rest because you're constantly worried about that takedown that's going to come. And you know it's going to come at some point. So you have to be very wary. You're very, keep your hips back. You can't load your shots. It's very difficult to load off your shots. And so when you get rid of those factors, when you take away all those extra variables that they don't have to account for, it it changes the game. It becomes a different, uh, it becomes a different fight. And that's what I saw. That's what I noticed when I was watching this fight. I was like, dude, this is amazing. Because what I'm picking up on is Tyson doesn't have a killer instinct. Because boxing doesn't breed killer instinct. It, it, it can't. It's not possible for it to be killer instinct. Because first of all, you're not fighting the best of the best. And secondly, because the rule constraint is more of your gaming a system. And see, the problem is when you game a system... You lose accountability in certain aspects of the game, of actual fighting. So boxing is an element of fighting, but it's not an actual fight. And that's why I used to laugh when Connor said, it's a quarter of a fight. This is not a real fight. MMA is the real thing. If you really want to learn what real fighting is, go do MMA. Where everything's free. And see, that's what the other aspect too. And I think Sean Strickland, if we get Sean Strickland in a boxing match, I think Sean's going to terrify the boxing community. 
because Sean doesn't even worry about taking guys down. He's purely striking in MMA. And I don't understand. People don't understand how difficult it is to just be purely striking in MMA. Because one of the things you start to realize is when you're striking in MMA, you once again, you have to account for so many things. So you're looking at like, okay, how the fuck is Sean Strickland purely just boxing people's faces off with just jabs and straights? That's all he's doing. If you watch most of his fights, he just crowded Philly rolling. And he's figured out the optimal way to stalk somebody, keep consistent pressure, jab your face off, and hit you with a right as soon as you open up. And that's what Izzy learned, that kickboxing might be fake. See, we're going to start learning now. We're going to start really seeing that a lot of this shit that we thought was real, like Muay Thai, uh, kickboxing, karate, is not really striking. The purest striking is in MMA. Because you have to account, like, because think about it. If you have to strike, if all you're doing is striking, in MMA, you're not taking nobody down. You still have to deal with the, the threat of a takedown. You got to deal with the threat of a kick. If you can be able to strike in those type of conditions where you could just purely use your hands, despite having everybody else be able to use their own weapons, that makes you a pure striker, a striker of the highest order. I'm telling you, if Sean Strickland gets a fight, I always want to see if we can get Sean Strickland versus Alexander Usyk, that would be the fight to break the internet. Thank you for listening. Peace.